How can AI impact job markets and employment? Now, let's talk about AI and jobs, and I'll be very direct. AI will almost certainly displace more jobs than it creates in the long run. Now, I know that's a strong statement, and it goes against sometimes the common narrative, especially from some AI theorists and economists who say, you know, look at history, every wave of new technology created more jobs than it destroyed, you know, from the steam engine to the internet. And they point out that AI will augment human work, boost productivity, and open up entirely new categories of employment that we cannot even imagine yet. And in the short run, they're partly right. We're already seeing that AI can take over repetitive tasks, help with writing code, analyzing data, uh, even generating interesting creative content. And that's powerful. It will make knowledge workers certainly more efficient and in some cases more valuable. But here's the problem. AI is not just a tool. It is not a shovel. It is not a steam engine. It is not even like the spreadsheet or the computer. It is designed with a fundamentally different goal. Not to assist, but to replicate human cognition. Its purpose isn't necessarily over the longer arc of time to help a doctor. It is to be a diagnostician. Not to assist a lawyer, but to write the brief, to summarize the case and potentially even predict the outcome. The entire arc of AI research has been about replacing the core of what we think makes work skilled. And those are reasoning, problem solving, perception, even empathy in customer service contexts. And as models get better, and they will, entire professions will face existential risk. The impact will not be evenly distributed. It's not just like factory workers or clerical roles. This time it's designers, it's analysts, it's junior engineers, it's paralegals, entry-level marketers. And, and this time there's no guarantee that the displaced workers can simply retrain into newly created jobs because those jobs might also be done by AI, faster, cheaper, and at scale. Now, to be fair, yes, there will be new job categories. We'll need prompt engineers, we'll need AI auditors, we'll need ethicists, we'll certainly need model trainers, as well as regulatory experts. But that list is short, highly specialized, and not enough to absorb the volume of displaced labor, especially as AI moves up the skills ladder. And here's the kicker. Most of this is happening behind closed doors. We don't have the transparent view into what capabilities these models are gaining week to week. Because the labs building them, whether it's OpenAI, whether it's Anthropic or Google DeepMind, are racing ahead without real accountability and transparency. There's little visibility into which jobs are being tested for automation, what experiments are being run, or what internal benchmarks are being hit. And that secrecy prevents governments, educators, and communities from preparing for what's coming. We're not talking about decades anymore. In some sectors, we're talking about years, if not months. And this certainly isn't a call to halt AI, but it is a call to be honest about its trajectory. We certainly cannot afford to sugarcoat this as just the next wave of productivity tools. AI is different. It's not just transforming work, it's redefining who or what does that work. And that has massive implications for the future of labor equity and economic stability. So yes, short term productivity will spike, some new jobs will emerge and companies will celebrate efficiency. But long term, we need to grapple with the real possibility that AI will hollow out entire sectors, not just a system. And if we don't face that now, we're going to be dealing with consequences that ripple far beyond employment into identity, purpose, and as well as social cohesion.